Well, if there's a bright center to the universe, you're on the planet that it's farthest from. Welcome to the Outer Rim. Enjoy your stay. Previously on X Men. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. This is Rob here at Smirking Gun, and we are back talking comics. More specifically, we are finishing up X Men 97, the prequel series to the animated series that's bridging the gap between the ending of the original animated series and the new animated series. And I have not yet watched X-Men 97 because I decided I'm just going to wait until the hype is over, till the show is over. And then this book came out and I was like, this is the best way to even do that. It gives me a reason to just get the whole story first and then watch the animated series. And I'm now hyped and I'm nervous because I'm going to be doing videos for every episode. And this is like a big moment. And I hope, that whatever I give you guys as far as content for X-Men 97 goes, I hope it's at least something, at least there'll be parts of it hopefully you can say you haven't seen anybody else do. Uh, what that's going to entail, I'm going to have to try to work on and experiment with some things. So I want to do this right because there's a reason why I wanted to wait. And hopefully I can make something special for you all. Speaking of special, this is going to be a special uh, finale viewing of this book that just came out yesterday. Uh, I have not read this yet. So I've decided that, you know, instead of talking about what I think of it, <laughs> you know, during like having read it and then talk, talk about that and then read the book and then come up with some final se sentence, you know, like I'd rather get to reading the book and then talk about it after. But um so far, I mean, I really love this. You, if if you like Saturday morning cartoons, more specifically, if you liked the actual, you know, the animated series, if you like X Men ninety seven, there's no reason you really couldn't or shouldn't like this. It should be up your alley. It might still not be for everyone, and it might be, you know, like a slight writing step down but i don't know i don't know i haven't watched the new series you know what i'm saying but like as good as as like the plot writing and everything was in in the original animated series there were still times when it was just you know you, it felt like you know just regular stale writing that you get from anything but i've really enjoyed this i've loved hearing the voices in my head again like uh, from cal dodd and everybody else that's that's been a part of the animated series and I hope everybody's enjoyed me trying to do it. Uh, I couldn't do it any other way folks. Um, but to just get into like wh what's been going on in this book, right? This is the finale. And so far, I mean, if this is the only video of mine you've watched of this show and you want to, uh, or this book, uh, and you want a synopsis of everything that's going on so far. Well, it's like after Xavier's end at the end of the animated series, and now they've got to find a new direction to go in, right? Um, how do they go on? And it's a time where, you know, the X-Men, at least in this universe, the X-Men 97 universe, um, they're becoming a lot more popular, and that does not sit well with Mr. Sinister, and his plans. And so he sets up a whole bunch of people to come after the X-Men uh, while they're separated from each other. Uh, they do a callback to early X-Men from 1990s. A uh, character named Hazard comes back. And they, we got to see how they adapt his story from the comics to this, what I consider an extension of, this, of the animated show. Um, we also got to see the basically, I think the 
end of the Naughty Boys from the original series, where now Sabretooth and his Marauders that very much similar to the original Marauders that were in uh, the Mutant Massacre uh, with the uh, Morlocks. Uh, they seem to be way more in line with that. We got to see, oh gosh, I'm forgetting her name, Sienna Blaze. We got to see her show up, another kind of minor character from the comics who I believe is, I said, was dead now. Uh, through you know, she's just one of those characters that comes and goes, and it was still kind of fun to see like how her powers affected Brogue, and then. You've got the Wolverine being attacked by the Marauders with Storm as he's separated because he's upset about Gene. That's how that starts. So but Storm and Wolverine are fighting all the Marauders when finally Morph shows up and helps join and turn the tide on everybody. Meanwhile, everything's being shown on the news. Then you've got, like I said, Hazard attacks the school where Gene and Scott and Beast are. Uh, this is also like a right... Then when Scott finds out that Gene is pregnant, so he goes into usual Scott mode. <laughs> Whether you like Cyclops or not, there's definitely elements to the character that I just have never warmed up to. Uh, there's, it, But there's parts of him that I do like. There's just parts of him I don't. And, you know, I think that makes an interesting character. He reminds, you know, it's hard to be the leader. Uh, it's hard to be liked and be the leader. And I think that that is a very true thing. I think that no matter who the leader of the X-Men is, that's not like, you know, we don't want anybody telling Wolverine what to do. You know what I'm saying? But like, that's what a leader's supposed to do. And you know, and I, I know I'm kind of going off on a bit of a Cyclops tangent, but like, uh, it's true. It's just, there's parts of him that I don't like, but I get him. You know what I mean? Like he's, he's tasked to tell everybody how to do things. Uh, anyway, uh, so they've got all that going on. And then it was, uh, after visiting Dazzler, you got Bishop, Jubilee, Rogue, and Gambit facing off against Sienna Blaze, where she touches Rogue or Rogue touches her and she kind of goes off. And after everything ends up being settled and people either escape or get beaten, they all decide, you know, Hey, it's time to go chill out over at Jean's. <laughs> And what else could go wrong? Hey, we're perfectly safe here. You know, that was a bit of a like, okay, you know, like, whatever. Like, <laughs> we know there needed a, that there's a big showdown, but it made me wish that there was another issue of this. So that they may, be, maybe could set up uh, this finale a little bit better instead of just saying, no, they all just know where they, where they are because Sinister just sends them all there. You know what I mean? But... Up until now, man, I've just really loved this book for what it is and not for what it isn't. I'm glad that this book somehow exceeded my expectations when outside of coolness, nostalgia factor, some great covers, um, I really wasn't that, you know, expecting that much. And what I got was exactly what I wanted. I wanted my fix of the animated series and I got it. And now I'm all even more hyped to go into X-Men 97 proper with what I consider now to be the full story. So anyway, without further ado, though, let's start checking out panel by panel X-Men 97 number four, the big finale. All right. So let's jump into this. It's X-Men 97 number four. Love this cover. This is like, it reminds me a little bit of like uh, the action in X-Men number three. the One of the last uh, Jim Lee, that was the last Claremont book, I believe. Um, but Sinister wasn't in the middle of it or anything. It was just that big fight with Magneto. But I do love this. This has everybody in here. And Todd Knox cover is really good. Everybody's represented. And I like this look, this Sinister. Okay, here we go. X-Men 97, Steve Fox writer, Salva Espen artist, Matt Miller colorist, VCs Joe Sabino is the letterer. 
In Westchester, where just yesterday a band of mutant mercenaries calling themselves the Marauders attacked a local establishment. Thankfully, through the timely intervention of several members of the X-Men, no one was harmed in the altercation. In other mutant news, a Russian-speaking strongman with steel skin rescued a young... <laughs> See, they always do this. They always do this. They're, now they throw in a, a freaking Colossus reference and we'll just be like, ah, man. Don't worry, Mr. Gray. New tech always has a learning curve. The mute button's right here. See? Click. Your father wouldn't read an instruction booklet to save his life, Gene. <laughs> Your mother's right. Do you remember what happened when I tried to set up the answering machine? <laughs> uh, yes, I actually, I can't recall. How odd. Hmm. May I borrow your daughter, Mr. and Mrs. Gray? Of course, Ms. Storm. I do not blame you for feeling overwhelmed, Gene. It is rare that we can all gather to celebrate news as wonderful as you and Scott having a child on the way. That's true, Aurora. I've just been having the oddest lapses in memory lately, like I'm living a life that's not my own. But maybe that's a stress all. Mothers to be experienced. Oh, man. Are they setting up? Oh, by the way, that them all just standing around eating sandwiches is just <laughs> weird. Oh, wow. Is this really a... Come on, Logan. If you keep brooding so hard, Daredevil's going to... Oh, it's, it's freaking Morph. Okay. <laughs> Come on, Logan. If you keep brooding so hard, Daredevil's going to sue you for copyright infringement. You're a regular man without cheer. <laughs> Don't know what you mean, Morph. I'm over the moon for the happy couple. My sympathies, Bishop. Such frivolities must feel like a cruel distraction from your time-displaced plight. Actually, Beast, this ain't so bad. See, Jean, I knew you deserved a real baby shower. I only wish that the professor were here to celebrate with us. I know, Scott. So do I. You sure you pushed the right button, Jubilee? Seems to gambit that the TV sets on the fritz. Newfangled thing might need to adjust the antenna. <laughs> Wait a minute. I recognize that energy buzz, everyone. Get down! Ka kaboom Mr. and Mrs. Gray, are you... <coughs> All right. We're fine, Scott. Is Gene... I'm here, Mother. That was not what I meant when I said <coughs> this party would be a blast. <laughs> Looks like our invites got lost in the mail. Did you spell Sienna Blaze wrong on the envelope? The Marauders prefer to be fashionably late anyway. Enough quips. It's time to eradicate the X-Men and then raise this town to the ground as payback for their sins. Attacking us at the mansion made me mad, Hazard. Striking us here makes me furious. No harm will come to this place. These people, while the X-Men, yet draw breath. You've been lovely hosts, Mr. and Mrs. Gray, but I think it's best you retire to the safety of the Blackbird and let us handle these uninvited guests. To me, my X-Men! Take them down. Don't have to tell me twice, Summers. Oh, this is going to be fun. Oh, and I mean, you can practically play that. Yeah, like that. <laughs> Eat sparks, pet rock. The name's Prism Girl, and I can reflect anything you throw at me. Nothing can stop the Morphonaut. <laughs> Don't hold back with this one, Bishop. Wasn't planning to psych. Kasap. 
Where's your leader, Arclight? Sabretooth calling sick today? Swish. Elsewhere, a brave choice not to lead from the front creed, says the man watching the play-by-play -play from his secret lair. Sorry, I'm trying to do the animated series kind of sounding voices, folks. The Marauders need more than them. I need them. If they can't handle Logan's little friends on their own, they're just dead weight. See you when I see you, Sinister. Of that, I have no doubt. Rogue told me about you, Sienna Blaze. Every time you unleash your powers, you threaten the integrity of the electromagnetic sphere itself. Ding, ding, ding. Isn't it great? Whoa. Crackle. Shh, shh, shh. Don't she know you're supposed to yell Timber first? At least this dog don't gotta go to waste. Log. At least this log don't gotta go to waste. <laughs> Thwack. Gah! I must caution you again, Jean. With all due respect for your strength and experience, I don't know that someone in your condition should be engaging in battle. I'm still an X-Man, Hank. The team needs me. We will always need you. More, more foreshadowing. But you must also trust us to rise to the occasion. Hey! Enough one-on-one -on -one time to get the whole neighborhood on the run, on the fun. In on the fun. Man, I can't read. If she hits a gas main, the entire area could go up in an inferno. Inferno. Aw, oh, Boy Scout, don't threaten me with a good tap crack. Huh? I've telepathically disabled Arclight's mind, Scott. Now the rest is up to you. All right, team. We giant ran scenarios just like this in the danger room. Bishop and Morph, get in Corsair formation. Wolverine, you, this ain't a dancing routine, Summers. Following the right moves won't. We face powerful enemies, my fellow X-Men. We must work together. Storm's right. Wolverine, you fought more of these foes than I have. What do you think we should do? Thought you'd never ask. This may not be a routine, but switching dance partners never hurts. Snicked. Mind if I cut in, Beast? What's mine is yours, my friend. Ha! <laughs> there we go. Incredible Hulk. Right? <laughs> Incredible Hulk homage right there. What is that? Incredible Hulk 340? 341? Can you reflect these, buddy? <laughs> Never bring a harpoon to a laser fight. Ah! I can't believe Chuck was ever friends with a schizoid like you. Do not mock me, child. Stand still, Fuzzball. That's Dr. Fuzzball to you, ruffian. Remy, you mind if I borrow a little something? I owe Sienna payback for leaving me high and dry in Central Park. For you share, Gambit don't mind a bit of hurt. Your antics end now, Sienna. Hey! You like to cause trouble and run, girly. Try doing that when your whole outfit's charged with kinetic energy. Oh, that's pretty awesome, actually. <laughs> All right, Jubes, I'm ready to fight armor with armor. Careful, Morph. I think I made this guy extra angry. Northern winds, heed my call. Whoosh. Cool the fires of vengeance and Hazard's heart. Can't move. This spinning top is the last of them, no? Flack. Not quite, Gambit. Our sleeping beauty. Is trying to make a run for it. Kazap! No! Little Miss Natural Disaster wasn't so big and tough when she thought she was going to blow up. I don't think we'll need to worry about another rematch. 
So what now? We wait for Dr. Agent Major Brigadier Val Cooper to show up and cuff him, boys? Back where I come from, we had more permanent solutions. Accepting that the government is willing to support our efforts will take time. Significant change often does, Aurora. Let's get these losers locked up already. We've got a baby shower to finish. Maybe let's clean up the destruction first, Jubilee. Oh, Scott, it felt so wrong not to fight by your side. You were with me every moment of the battle, Gene. The rest of us can handle the rough stuff until our son is born. That's just it, Scott. Even after the baby's here, there's no telling what dangers will lurk around the corner. Every failure is just success delayed. That child will be mine. Agent Carl Denty? Not an agent anymore. Good. My name is Henry Peter Gyrick. I believe you and I have mutual friends looking out for humanity's best interests. What are you doing here, Emma? I wanted to see the look on your face when you read the last will and testament of Charles Xavier. Oh, boy. No, this can't be happening to me. Oh, wow, this really is setting up stuff. We'll face them as we always have, Gene, together as the X-Men. Never the end. And that's the end. Um, okay, okay, so let's get into my thoughts on this overall. All right, so this is the big fight to, to finish things up, to wrap things up. Big action all the time, and then we got the setup that's literally, you know, setting up big beats, I assume, for the series. And I assume that since this book is out now and it's after the show is over, that a lot of people that have seen the show, you know, now get to see, oh, they did it here, and this is where that happened, blah, blah, blah. This is, you know, him finding out this, or blah, blah, blah. So I got a couple of things spoiled here, not really things, maybe not spoiled. I mean, I knew Sunspot was going to be in it anyway. Um, but the thing about like what Magneto's doing at the school, well, that pretty much is kind of a given, right? <laughs> now that Emma Frost shows up with the will saying you should see this Magneto. I want to know how, you know, like I just like the idea of Shaw and Emma Frost and Magneto having a conversation. So overall, it didn't have a lot going on inside it as far as plot because it's the big fight thing. So everybody sets things up. We get to see the team come together, and then they literally have to come together instead of coming to blows and arguing over how they're going to take on these people and fight, um, which I'm glad wasn't something that they spent a whole bunch of time on where it was like, oh, we all suck fighting with each other. We, we've got issues with each other and blah, blah, blah. So this was pretty standard, and it was less, I'll say, like it wasn't – as like no, now that it's over and the, the show is going on or, you know, it moves to the show, it's a little underwhelming, but it is what it's supposed to be. The big fight and then moving on. What did I expect there to really be? There's nothing that's going to be too resolved in this. Again, it's the bridge between the two shows. So, in that respect, it did what it had to do. It had to get resolve the conflict with all these people that were after them. So, you know, otherwise, how, how would you explain, you know, like, if you don't finish it now, it would have to carry over into the series or then, you know, why even do this, this series at all? They just needed a tight, controlled story that they could end in, in abruptly. And that's the only problem. Like I said, if there was a fifth issue of this, they could have done something with four that built up a little bit more where maybe the fight actually starts in four and ends in five and then has a better epilogue. But otherwise it was, you know, so the dialogue wasn't as important in this because again, it was just like standard. Okay. How do we fight with this and blah, 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 you know? So all the good meaty writing in this that I did like, even if it's Saturday morning cartoon writing all happened mostly in issues one through three. 
so this is the big yay everybody's fighting if you like action which i do you know this is up your alley but i wanted a bit more and i didn't get it and that's okay because i still really like this and i do like how they set up at the end um everything that's going to happen on the show and it just makes me more and more hyped to get into it all right folks because i really want to do some cool stuff for these and now that i the show is over and i don't have to be like oh my god episode two is about to come out and i haven't done this episode one i don't have to do that i can take my time but i'm really glad that they made this book and i hope that they do it again when you know for a bridging maybe they've got a story they can tell that bridges season one of x-men 97 and season two i think that uh, the art was pretty decent i mean look at times like I was joking about the scene in the in the in the kitchen. But again, this is supposed to be a Saturday morning cartoon. So it looks like a Saturday morning cartoon. So that means some of the anim the drawings have to look like that. And that's the way it looked on the show. Like they especially the old show. So I don't really, you know, I I wasn't expecting to to open this up and have it be like, you know, classic Jim Lee X Men or something. You know what I mean? So if you are able to, you know, suspend your disbelief within suspending your disbelief, which is what I mean is, you know, a, a, a comic based on an animated show within a show, that kind of thing. Like this is a lot of this has been a lot of fun. And I got to thank this this series anyway for being part of the reason why I started getting more and more hyped and excited and doing more and more comic stuff. This was me cutting my teeth again. And so I got to give respect to the book that helped me get back into making more content. So I'm, you know, I just want to thank everybody that decided to make this book because you helped me get my channel kind of uh, back on up and running. And, and it made me find a bunch of new ways and to make stuff on YouTube. So that's my spiel on X-Men 97. And now it's time to get to X-Men 97, the animated series. When is it going to come out? Look, I'm going to make these specials, so I've got work to do. I've got work to do that I've got to finish, and then I'm going to focus on that. When I start putting my time into X-Men 97, Episode 1, it's going to be something. So keep, you know, I'll keep everybody, you know, up to date, especially if, like, in other videos of mine, when I have updates for it, I will bring them up. So... For everybody out there that's watching this for the first time or finding my channel for the first time, if you've made it this far, thanks. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. We're going to be doing more comic book content. We've got Wolverine, Madriporn Knights number five. Uh, we're doing Wolverine. Start. We got. We just put up Wolverine number one on the channel recently. We'll be doing Wolverine number two. We've got X Men from 1969. We're going to be doing issue number 56 of that. We've got Nice House in the Lake number three. We're going to be doing coming up. Plus, we got the Terror Infamy. If you've ever heard of that anthology series from AMC, we're covering that. And a special project coming out that I'm trying to finish for a friend. So thanks for watching, everybody. Keep a lookout for all that stuff. Keep reading comics. If you haven't read comics yet and you're wanting to read comics, start reading comics. Uh, be good to each other. And we'll see you on the next episode. Bub. Bye. Ba 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 ba